In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the various methods for attaching various sizes and shapes of wood to the AccuSlice carriage for the purpose of cutting these thin strips of wood on the bandsaw. I'll demonstrate the various techniques for mounting the boards to be cut and show examples of the slicing of the boards with the AccuSlice system. Listed are the seven methods in the approximate time on the video should you wish to fast forward to that section of the video. For most of the applications we've demonstrated in our previous videos, we've been using double-sided tape to attach our boards to the sacrificial fence on the AccuSlice system. We investigated a wide variety of manufacturers and types of these double-sided tapes to determine what tape would work the best for our application. A summary of our findings are located in the white paper in the literature section on our website. After reviewing about a dozen different manufacturers and types of tapes on the market, we settled on the x fasten tape as the best tape to use for our application. We selected the x fasten tape as the best tape to use because it has three very important properties. First of all, it's cloth-based. You do not want to use the paper-based double-sided tapes. The paper-based tapes tear apart when you try and remove your boards from the sacrificial fence. Secondly, the tape is quite thin. You do not want to use these thicker carpet tapes. These tapes are thicker, and as a result, you get vibration and movement of your wood as you're trying to cut on the AccuSlice system. As a result, the cuts would not be as smooth since the wood is vibrating as you're trying to cut your board. Finally, the X-Fasten tapes are, adhere quite well to both the sacrificial fence and your wood, but at the same time, they can be easily removed. The X-Fasten tape is available from Amazon. Be sure not to buy the carpet tape version. Buy the standard double-sided tape version. I normally attach a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF to use as a sacrificial fence onto the carriage on my AccuSlice system. And then I coat this surface with shellac or polyurethane or a varnish. This provides for a nice smooth surface and provides for better adhesion of the double sided tape to this sacrificial fence. Another critical concern when using double sided tape is that your board must be perfectly flat. If the board is not flat, if it's cupped or twisted, it's not going to adhere properly to the sacrificial fence, and as you're cutting a board, it can actually come loose. Therefore, I usually run my boards against my edge sander when I'm using double-sided tape. Attach a double-sided tape to the board being cut. Then remove this paper covering on the tape. And then we're going to attach the board to the sacrificial fence. Now, my preference is not to put this board flat against the table and then attach it. When you do that, you might get binding of the wood as you're cutting it through the uh, bandsaw. So I usually use a spacer and just a piece of scrap, which I cut in the pass, and that just keeps the board just slightly off the table. Now I mount it to the sacrificial fence, and I usually clamp it for 15 seconds to maybe a minute. Uh, using either parallel clamps such as these, Or you can also use these Craig type clamps, I use both applications. And the purpose of this clamping is just to set the tape so it gets better adhesion. And you don't need to set that for more than like 15 seconds to a minute at the most. Just enough to compress the tape and get better adhesion to the sacrificial fence. Then I remove the And I remove the spacer now. This wood will slide across the bandsaw with no binding. Also, this technique works better on smaller boards. Longer boards and wider boards may have a slight twist or warp in the board, and as a result, when you clamp the board, it may clamp initially, but with vibration and use, that board will spring away a little bit and you'll get movement of your, of your board, giving you an accurate cut. So, uh, your board must be perfectly flat, or in case of longer boards, I have another technique I'll use to describe later. Also, in using this technique, you're going to be cutting sequentially to get you know, every piece of wood out of your uh, piece of wood you've uh, attached to your fence. But you want to be careful not to cut into the double-sided tape. If you cut into the tape, it's going to gum up your blade. And that gumming up of the blade is very hard to remove. Also, in attaching wood to the sacrificial fence, it's important that the board not hang beyond the edge of the sacrificial fence. If it hangs beyond the edge, you can get vibration of the wood and get inaccurate cuts. You always want your wood supported by the sacrificial fence to give you the best cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this board uh, 
with the system. And that first cut was just to square the board off, give me a flat surface to go forward. So now I'll advance my carriage. One full turn for my blade curve. Another 5, 10, 15. Let's make a 20,000 inch thick board. board measures 15,000 inch thick. To remove the board which is attached with double sided tape from the sacrificial fence, I usually use either a chisel or preferably a putty knife because it doesn't have a sharp edge. And I just jam it in there and then try and pry it loose. And again, this is the advantage of using a cloth based double sided tape. If that was paper on there, it would be all ripped up and you'd be scraping off a dozen little pieces of uh, tape off the fence. So that worked uh, quite nicely. And then I can remove this tape from my piece of wood. For longer and wider boards, I used a different technique. I actually glue the board to a piece of MDF, which is attached to my sac sacrificial fence. This is an untreated piece of MDF. It's not coated. I didn't seal this or shellac or anything. I actually used a uh, type on two glue to actually glue the board right to the sacrificial fence. And again, it's just off the bottom of the fence, not going the whole way to the bottom. This technique is done for several reasons. Number one is if you have a wide board or a long board, the board is probably not perfectly straight. It may have a warp or a twist in it. And if you use double-sided tape, it actually may come apart or come loose from the sacrificial fence as you're cutting it. By gluing it to the board, there's actually no movement of the board. Secondly, when using double-sided tape, you have to be careful you don't cut into the double-sided tape. That'll gum up your bandsaw blade. By gluing the board to the sacrificial fence, I can cut all the way down right to the sacrificial fence. So again, this is untreated MDF. There's no sealing on this at all. I just glued the board with type on two right to the sacrificial fence. And I've installed my uh, five foot rail because this is a, a 24 inch carriage with a 36 inch long piece of MDF mounted on it. And I need this to uh, cut these longer boards. So this board will be 30,000 inch thick by, it's actually 34 inches long. So there's our long strip, 30,000 inch thick, 34 inch long piece of walnut cut from this board. Perfectly straight, perfectly parallel. Nice, flat, smooth surfaces, good enough for gluing out my laminated strips for making some dizzy bowl. I can keep cutting down all the way into the board. You keep cutting the board down until you get all the way to the very bottom. And you can actually cut right to the very edge of the board. Uh, and then this uh, sacrificial fence can be reused. You can either run it through your board planer to remove the excess uh, board material on it. Or well, you can leave that little bit of material there and just glue right on top of it because it already is straight and flat. So as long as you're cutting boards the same size, you can just glue right to it. But I've re reused these uh, sacrificial fences, you know, 30, 40 times, just either planing it down or just gluing to the previous board that was on there. Likewise, I can cut wide boards. And a technique I often use is just swapping out my sacrificial fence. These are just screwed on with some screws. This piece of maple, I think it's about seven inches tall. 
I can raise my guide support. And that's the cut coming off the bandsaw. And again, this board was glued to a sacrificial fence with the Type on 2 glue. Now, in a likewise manner, I can cut uh, round boards, round discs, such as this segmented disc for segmented wood turning. Uh, this can either be mounted with double-sided tape or it can be glued directly to sacrificial fence. Again, uh, double-sided tape is easier and quicker, uh, but sometimes I use uh, double or use glue because I want to get every ounce of wood and not make sure I don't cut into the double-sided tape. And again, it's in the same process, moving the board so it just touches the blade, moving it back, and then advancing it slightly. So again, I advance the board 15 thousandths for my blade curve. Then however thick I want to make, usually what I want to make out of these solid rings like this is like feature rings. Uh, Spacings and a feature ring on a uh, segmented disc. So maybe I want something uh, 50 thousandths or so thick. So again, I just dial it in. So there I have a nice disc. It uses a, a thin strip and a feature ring on a project. You know, exactly straight flat and parallel all the way around. This is another special fence I made as I showed in a previous video. It consists of again a piece of three quarter inch MDF and I have a bunch of holes in here with uh, inserts, screw inserts and I can attach this and I have an offset cam which is listed on our website and I can cut round boards on this very easily. And it just mounts in there, you adjust your screws to the correct position, and then this offset cam locks the board in place. But this is a nice, quick, easy way to attach a wood to the sacrificial fence with no glues or no uh, double-sided tape. So again, just clamp that in position, and you can run it through the band saw blade. And that's the resulting ring, 50,000 inch thick, perfectly straight, flat, entire diameter of the, uh, or circumference of the ring. These are the pieces that I did previously in which I, I angled this carriage slightly and end up getting wedges looking like this. You see they're angled. Then when I glue them together, I get an angled bowl. But I was done just by, by tilting this slightly. Much like doing a, a tapered leg on a, on a table saw, so doing the same thing. You're, you're not changing your blade, you're actually changing your, uh, your fence. This is another possibility a customer suggested, which I've never tried, so I'm going to try it for the first time. He suggested putting masking tape on both your sacrificial fence and your piece of wood and using some CA glue to glue the two together and then it should come off pretty easily. So we'll give that a try here. So I put a piece of uh, some uh, painter's tape, masking type tape on both surfaces. And now we'll put some CA glue on here and see how it works. Yeah, it looks like it's set up pretty quickly. Give it a try. Yeah, I just cut 10 pieces of wood on there just to uh, 
Since this is the first time I tried this technique, I want to make sure they're all good. And they all look uh, quite good. All the same thickness, they look good. So the next thing is to see how easily this comes off the, the fence. So first of all, let me try a, just try releasing this tape here and see how that works. Yep, the tape came off. That's a technique I probably can use in the future. The last technique you could use, you could actually screw the board right to the sacrificial fence. And I did this initially when I first developed the AccuSlice system. I screwed the boards with some uh, screws that went maybe a quarter inch into the board and I was able to slice it off. The, the problem with that technique is you lose a quarter inch of your board. So it's, it's not the preferred technique, but uh, I have used it in the past, but uh, haven't used it in a while because it just wastes too much wood. But it always is an option to screw your board to the sacrificial fence directly. Rather than screwing your board directly to the sacrificial fence and wasting that quarter inch or so piece of wood, a better option is just to glue uh, your board to a piece of scrap MDF or plywood and then screw this piece of scrap wood to your fence. That way you don't waste any wood. And there we have a piece of the duck, 15 thousandths of an inch thick, approximately what, 4 by 6 inches. I did a previous video on cutting long boards on the AccuSlice system. On the AccuSlice system you can cut long boards up to 54 inches long using an 8 foot rail. Uh, so in this case, I have a long board. This board is probably about to what, four foot long, and I attach it to a piece of MDF, or I could use plywood, just some scrap wood. And then in this case, because the board is so long, it doesn't fit on one carriage. I actually need to use two carriages. I just installed my eight foot rail on the AccuSlice system, and I support the rail on two ends with two supports to reduce vibration of this long rail, since it hangs over the table by quite a bit. And then I've mounted my board, which is glued to a piece of MDF, to two 12-inch carriages. And it's just screwed in, in four different places. And so I'll move this back. And let me advance my carriage forward, and I'll cut a piece of wood off, maybe 50 thousandths of an inch thick. And there's our strip of wood, four foot long, 50 thousandths inch thick. On our website are two additional videos, one on cutting long boards on the AccuSlice system, and a second video entitled Cutting Wide Boards on the AccuSlice system. And these two videos will give you some additional pointers on uh, running longer and wider boards on the AccuSlice system. This next idea for attaching your wood to the carriage on the AccuSlice system, again, came to us from a customer. And I did uh, produce a video on this, which is on our website. And it involves making these uh, small pieces of MDF, sacrificial fences, and putting some screw inserts into holes. And these holes mount up with the holes on the carriage on the AccuSlice system. And then I use some 1032 thumb screws to actually attach this to the carriage. And the unique feature about this is I can take these small scrap pieces of wood, I can glue on my piece of wood I want to cut a, a sliver off of, cut my sliver that I need for a project and then put it back on the shelf you know, for a future project. So rather than Cutting this disc and cutting all my pieces now, not knowing what I'm going to need six months from now, I just cut off one ring at a time. So I made a bunch of these, all different sizes and shapes of boards, and I've glued some segmented rings to these, 
And I said, I'll, I'll put this on here, I'll cut a piece off as I need it, then I'll put it on the shelf and save it for the next project. There's just some of the other discs. Here's a little bit larger disc of some walnut segmented ring. Again, same thing. It's all mounted on there. This is I'm using four screws to hold this in place because it's a little bit bigger plate. And I have smaller ones. Then I have a longer one, actually a 12 inch one for some even longer boards that I could mount on here. So again, to, to use this, all I do is attach it to the carriage with these thumb screws. So there's my disc I cut off with this mounting system and now I can just take this board off, put it on the shelf and save it for my next project. I hope this video proved helpful in showing you the various ways of attaching wood to the carriage on the AccuSlice system to produce these various cuts of wood. As always, if you have additional concerns or questions please give us a call or drop us an email. We'll be glad to talk with you. In addition, if you found another way to cut wood or an application for the AccuSlice system, we'd also like to hear from you. Many of our ideas come from customers like you. So again, thank you very much for watching.